Hi everybody. We have been on our IVF series for a couple of weeks now and um, today I want to give you a bit more information about the risks and of course the benefits of IVF. So if you're interested, keep watching. It's going to be interesting. This is Dr. Wanjurun Degla and you're watching Footsteps to Fertility. I like to say that everything has a risk factor and I think that's not different for IVF. Every procedure, every medical procedure, even delivery has uh, a risk. Uh, I want to start though with the benefits because I don't want to scare you off. IVF is a wonderful procedure, um, has the highest success rates for conception leads into a beautiful baby or two or three at, uh, for some couples, can help complete the whole family of, 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 of some couples. So it's a wonderful invention. And um, for, for me, if you asked um, any couples who've go, who have gone through it, whether they really thought they shouldn't have, I don't think I have many who say we regret going through the IVF process. I think most people are happy to try whether it fails or it, it succeeds. Obviously, you're happier if it does succeed, but there is nothing. Um, the benefits of IVF can never be underplayed. Um, what are the risks? So the, the, the benefit is obviously the baby. What are the risks? Nobody really talks about this. Um, so I'll be bold and tell you there are risks to IVF. And the way I will start the risks is in a step-by-step -step process. So if you didn't watch our video, our earlier video on the step-by-step -step process of IVF, um, please um, watch that video to get the steps. So in step one, we talked about ovulation induction, which is where we get many eggs. This is a hormonal process. So I'll say um, anytime that we're having any medication into our body, um, there is a risk of an allergic reaction and that's from a simple Panadol to the hormonal drugs that we use in IVF. That's number one. Another thing that people um, or women need to be cautioned about and this is what I tell couples is that there are two ways that we could over get um, eggs or we could under get and we would need sometimes to cancel the cycle. So that has happened that if we get too many eggs, we probably are getting 20 or 30 or it's going, um, the hormones are too much for you. We may decide this is not going right. We need to cancel. And that's because there are risks to getting more eggs. I'm sure a lot of people are happy. No, 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 we want 20, we want, but there are risks. And the risks are something called OHSS, which is a serious condition, which can lead to a lot of problems. It can lead to fluid. Uh, accumulating in the abdomen it can lead to blood clots very rarely but it is something that is self-limiting does go away but at some points we need to cancel the cycle if we are getting too many eggs the other thing that can happen in that first stage is that we can underproduce eggs for some women especially women who are a bit older we don't have very many eggs we try our hardest but we don't get any egg and on day seven or nine we have to cancel the cycle because we know it's not going to lead into anything and this is very very painful for both the patient the couple and even for us because where there is hope sometimes um, we, we get very discouraged when we can't continue because um, the patient has not responded to the treatment. So those are some of the risks in the first stage. In the second stage, which is the egg retrieval stage where we collect the eggs, it is a surgical procedure. And I'm sure anybody who has ever gone into surgery knows there is a risk of anesthesia. Um, it's a short procedure, which is 20 to 30 minutes, but sometimes um, um, any anesthesia, remember it's medication we're giving, you're, you're be, we're being put to sleep, so there are the risks of anesthesia at that stage. The other risk is that we're putting a needle into your abdomen and um, sometimes we could hit the intestines or a blood vessel, very rarely has not happened in um, a long time, but that is a risk that you need to be aware of before you go in for that egg retrieval uh, process.
So in stage three, which was the egg fertilization um, stage, we only have really one risk and that, that it doesn't fertilize. And that can occur um, sometimes because of the quality of the sperm or the egg, we get that no fertilization occurs. Another process that is really painful to the couples because we did the whole uh, procedure, got into the egg site, oocyte retrieval stage, but nothing fertilizes, but it is something that does occur sometimes. Um, in the fourth uh, stage, which is the us putting back the embryo into the uterus, the embryo transfer stage, there, that's a very simple procedure. Most of the times there are no problems, but because we're introducing things from without, of the body to within sometimes we do get infection but most of the time i mean there's there's no problem with an embryo transfer so that must might be one of the riskiest steps um, to undergo the fifth stage is the waiting period the two week wait and beyond so most of the risk we're talking about in the waiting period are um, the baby related so if we do get pregnant in the after the two-week period and go into the pregnancy some of the things that IVF predisposes uh, women who are carrying pregnancies of IVF babies to are a couple of things one is multiples sometimes we put in one or two embryos and in some places they do three or four and multiple pregnancies as much as people want multiples I want twins triplets um, past the triplet stages is, is are risky pregnancies. You are more likely to um, have problems in your pregnancy like hypertension, diabetes, and those are things that are just known. You're more likely to have preterm babies, uh, babies who are born, born uh, with a low birth weight and have other problems. So multiples, yes, is ideal, but we, we, are not re we don't really like multiples. We prefer singletons or twins. Uh, beyond that is a bit risky for your health and for the baby's health. The other thing that IVF uh, babies may be uh, more prone to, but at a very slight um, increment, is birth defects. Um, a lot of clients have come and asked me, will I have a normal baby in terms of um, the brain development? Will they be autistic? Will they have Down syndrome or something like that? And none of these have been associated with IVF, but there is a 0.01% increment in uh, factors like cleft palate, um, a hole in the heart, um, the windpipe being a bit narrow or the anal canal being a bit narrow. So those are the four conditions that we think may have a slightly higher increment in terms of your baby getting it if it's IVF. But it's very, very, it's a 0.01% increment to the normal population. So really, it's not something that we really worry about. Um, so these are some of the risks in a step-by-step -step way. Um, I do want to say that really the benefit of a baby, I think any day will outweigh the risks. This is something that uh, you as a couple need to discuss. We do discuss it when we're giving you the advice, but at the end of the day, um, there's nothing better or no, nothing greater than having the opportunity to hold a little baby in your hands and, and see them grow up. So um, if you have any comments if you'd like to know more about the risks and benefits of IVF if you'd want to reach out and um, you're you're welcome to call us you're welcome to email you're welcome to comment or inbox us on our Facebook page um, subscribe to our videos and get to learn a little bit more about fertility this is Dr. Wanjuru Ndagwa and you're watching Footsteps to Fertility mm -hmm.